Hello and welcome to the Poimer Podcast, episode 85. I'm your host, Brad. My co-host, Eric, has COVID. Our guest host got stuck in a foreign country and couldn't make it, so we're recording something completely different. Welcome our temporary co-host, Borelio. So I'm your last option, huh? Yes. That's okay, though. <laughs> I'd rather not have more job to do. <laughs> <laughs> So, our beloved video editor and audio editor and everything else at this point, Borelio, has joined us once again because he has a cool magic trick that I wanted to show off for an episode. So, let me shoot myself in the foot and show Brad how easy it is to do my job. And let's all watch Borelio shit himself in the foot. Sounds good. So the point of this episode is to find a hobby hack that is an easy way to preview your paint scheme before having to actually apply it. This can be good for just a general check of is this a terrible idea or does it look as good when I actually apply it as it does in my head? Or maybe if you already have a paint scheme, you can visualize it in new models or models that you haven't bought already. True. That's actually a great use for it. But as always, this is a more advanced way to do this. It involves Photoshop or another free software or Photoshop that's free through magical means. Like GIMP or other options that Linux users use. Disgusting Linux users. <laughs> Does iOS users use GIMP? No, iOS users would use Photoshop. They pay for everything. They don't even understand you can get things for free. <laughs> They've never seen those online articles where doctors hate them. Get Photoshop for free with this one simple trick. Adobe <laughs> hates them. <laughs> yeah, so you can use your other alternative methods, but on this episode we're going to be using Photoshop because that's what I'm most used to use on the show, so I can explain it better to you using the Photoshop. And because he loves you more than me. Oh no. He's even put Photoshop in English this time. Oh yeah, that was a pain to do. <laughs> It was very funny when you were showing me the tutorial and you're like, just click this and this and this, and it's all in Portuguese. And I was like, thanks, Borelio. Come on, you can speak Portuguese. You know a bit about Spanish, and Spanish is worse Portuguese. You're just lucky we have more Brazilians than Mexicans who watch this. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I just stated a fact. <laughs> All right, so Borelio, start us off. Showcase this superpower. I want to see the most basic example of how this can be applied and how quickly it can be done. Okay, so on the screen right now, you have a model that's not Warhammer model. I don't know if it's 3D printed or from AOS or something else. It's not AOS. It looks like it's a clear resin. It's probably like a D&D model or something. Yeah, but you can think of it like a brimstone horror of Zinch from Chaos Demons. It's just a flaming guy. It's basically two colors, yellow and red. So a pretty simple model to visualize this trick. Are you ready, Brad? Yes. So new layer, huge saturation, click colorize and boom, you can change the color. But now you say, but Berilio, this is changing the color of the entire picture. But Berilio, this is changing the color of the entire picture. So you want to change the color of just the model, right? So you can pick up the object selection tool and select the object. So you can apply the hue saturation just to the selection that is the model. So now we can slide this bar and change the color of our model really easily. But Brad, have you noticed that we lost some detail when I did that? The original model was yellow and red, correct? Correct. I had noticed it. And this model is looking all one color. So I didn't do a good job at first. Let's delete that. Let's add that hue saturation layer again. Let's apply just to the selection we made. And instead of applying to that entire model, we're going to use this hand tool right here, pick up a color, and now we're just changing the color that we picked. Okay, that's pretty fancy, actually. For being three clicks, that's pretty interesting. So, you see, with just three clicks, we were able to visualize other colors on our model. All right, so that's interesting for like the bare basics, but let's actually apply this to something in 40K. Let's look at a, a model that is relevant and see how long this would take. Okay, so let's pick up this Abaddon model right here. 
And to make sure that we don't accidentally use someone's model they didn't want used, we harassed all the patrons for these images, so we'll throw their names up on screen as we use their stolen artwork for this terrible project and ruin the paint jobs of people who are far more skilled than me. Yeah, so first we have this Abaddon model right here. All right, so let's do something basic. Let's like just say, I want to see what he would look like with a different colored cape. So you want to change the color of his cape. You can see that the cape is red, but there are also other red tones on the model. So when it, we come to this hue saturation layer and we click on the reds and change the tones, We've hit the entire model. It's not very useful. Yeah, exactly. So we kind of have to use some kind of masking right here. So we hide the effect, the effect from the model and just show it on the cape, right? Yep. So before we go any further, let me tell you that there are many ways of doing things on Photoshop. You want to change color, you want to make selections, anything you want to do, there are multiple tools that you can achieve that. We're using the hue saturation tool to change color, but there are other ways of doing it that I'll show later on the episode. And now I will make a selection and there are multiple ways of doing that. So the way I'm going to do it now, I will duplicate this layer. So when I erase something from the top layer, the layer right below it is shown. Right, so the top layer is where we're doing the color change. Yeah, you can see here on the right on Photoshop the several layers we have and we have two layers with this model and the mask layer is this white and black layer here on the right of the model. The white parts is the parts that are being shown and the black parts are the parts that are being hidden. So when we pick up the brush tool and we paint this black, we hide it and when we paint this white, we show it. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna basically paint black what we don't want to be affected by the color change layer. So we can do this real quickly for the sake of the episode. We can basically paint everything that is not the cape. It doesn't matter that much for accuracy for this because again, we're just trying to get a rough idea of what our model will look like. It doesn't need to be perfect. It has to be close enough so that you can feel confident that you're making the right choice with your paint scheme. If there's little issues with the overall final product, we don't care that much about the fine details. It's not like we're submitting this photo to something. It's just for our use. Yeah, and remember, we're doing it really quickly to, to visualize how it would be on our model, but if if you want to have a perfect selection for to display the image to someone, you can, of course, take your time and make the selection perfect. You can also use other tools, like, for example, if the object you are trying to select is pretty clear like this sword, you could use the object selection tool to select it. So now you have a basically perfect selection of the object with one click and you can apply the color change just to that. And the way you're doing this with multiple layers doing multiple color changes is you make a different hue saturation item for each and then link them to a sub layer for the parts you want to change to be that color. Exactly. So when we have a complex image and we want to change colors on different parts of the model, we have to do that. We have to do a selection for the cape, a selection for the sword, a selection for the hair. And so we can manipulate each part separately. But in most cases, you want to change the color of an armor the color of a highlight so it doesn't take that much time for example let's go to another image let's go to a night rampager uh, let's say we want to change the color of the shoulder pads correct let's use the object selection tool and try to select the shoulder oh wow that actually worked really easily yeah it was a pretty good selection from the start so now we can create a mask on it by clicking on the mask button and then a hue saturation layer applying the hue saturation layer just to the layer below it and now we can click colorize and change the color of the shoulder okay that's impressive i didn't realize how fast you could do something that's got that clean of an outline because i kept making you do it on complex stuff yeah for example you can let's select another part of this knight to see if we can get a similar good selection try selecting all of the armor panels at once okay so we're gonna use the object selection tool we're gonna press shift select another thing and keep selecting until we have everything. So the way I did, it's not a perfect selection. Photoshop didn't select it perfectly. We can create a layer mask on the selections and change the colors like we we're doing before. But we can also limit the range of the green
things we want to change. So this bar right here, we can adjust how much of the greens we want to change. So we can perfectly adjust to where we want to change colors. And of course, depending on the model, if the model has different colors on it, it's better to use this tool to change by color instead of changing by selection. For example, the Abaddon, if we change the blues, it will clearly change just the claws and the foot. And when you want to do the color change, it's really easy in a lot of software. It's not just Photoshop. The masking with the layers, Photoshop is the best at it. It has by far the best object select tool and all that. But this is one of the easiest quick and dirty ways you can do it on like any of the free softwares very easily. Yeah, so let's try another model. Let's try a ghost queue. This purple ghost queue right here is very much purple. Good job. You can identify colors. You're hired. I don't know, Brad. Maybe you're going to tell me this is not purple. <laughs> this is in makeup some color name that I don't know. And I will believe you. <laughs> no, it's lavender. <laughs> So Brad, let's say we don't want to do any selections. Let's find out other ways of doing the same thing. Here on Photoshop, again, it might be different for other apps, but on Photoshop right here, we have on image adjustments, we have the option replace color. And then a pop-up comes out where we can pick up the color and then we can pick up the color that we want to change to. We can use this eyedropper to pick up the color we want to change. And then on this box right here, we can slide it down and up to change the color that we want to transform it to. That's shockingly convincing when you change it to like that dark red. It looks like it was painted in that scheme. That's pretty awesome, actually. And right now I'm changing the color without changing the luminosity, but you can also change the luminosity on it to make it darker or brighter. So you see now we have a darker red. So this way we can change colors really easily without having to deal with masks, which is pretty good when we are, we are in a hurry. Yeah, so this one actually seems really useful for like, let's say you find a cool speed painting video when you're newer and you like the way it's speed painted, but you would have picked different colors and you wonder how it would look in the color scheme that you wanted. You could just take a picture from the end of the video, put it in here, grab the color and just pull it to the color that you want it to be instead. Exactly. This is going to work even if the model is more complex because you're picking up the color that you want to change. So it's not affecting the other colors. So it even works on models that are not monochrome, like this ghost queue. For example, if we go back to the Abaddon model and we want to change the blues, we can use that tool on image adjustments, replace color, click on the blues and then change the blues to something else like a purple or a yellow or a red or a yellow again or a green or a blue. It was blue actually. <laughs> it was blue. <laughs> We need more colors. We need more colors, guys. <laughs> this is not enough colors. <laughs> so we can do that. Maybe you don't want your Abaddon to have a Salamander helmet on its spikes anymore. Maybe your friend started playing Blood Angels and you want to change the color of the helmet to red. All right. So obviously it's pretty easy to see ways you can make use of this general skill. Like if you play around in Photoshop and follow this video with all the menus, you should be able to pull this off by just clicking around till you get it right. And you're not limited in what you want to use as your example product. We wanted to make sure we don't share people's armies without their permission or anything. So we couldn't just steal images off the web, but you can. As long as it's for your own personal use, it's fine. And let's be real here. If you think I'm doing a bad job on explaining all this, you can just put it on YouTube, Photoshop, change colors, and you see a bunch of tutorials online showing many techniques of changing colors. It's not just one technique. Yeah, on the YouTube video, Borelio could show a picture right now of one of those you could go to. And I've got a link in the corner. Wow, video magic. <laughs> exactly. So right now on this episode, we are going to it pretty quickly. So you can visualize how easy it is to do this kind of stuff. But if you want to take your time and learn more in depth how to use these tools, it's not one hour video, guys. It's like 10 minutes video. You're going to go out of it with a new skill very easily. So Brad, orc players. <laughs> If only Eric was here for this, but yes, orc players. They like orc booties, right? 
They do. So when we ask our patrons to send pictures of their models, people send pictures of their orc booties. For example, this Redemptor Death Dread right here, it has purple on it, blue on it, but also a lot of black, right? Yes, there's a lot of shadowing, there's a lot of lower light areas. Yeah, so let's take this opportunity to say that black and white are a pain to work with. You don't say. I haven't heard you say this fact a lot of times. <laughs> So, black and white is not a color. It's, it is a color, but it's not a color. It's maybe the lack of color or maybe all the colors. So, when we use those tools to change colors, you will see that we do not achieve white. Yep, we're just changing the different hue. We're not actually changing the light level. Exactly. So, if you want to go to white, you got to change the luminosity and lower the saturation. And if you want to go black, we go down the lightness bar. All of them with the saturation on low. So we don't change the hue, we change the saturation and the lightness. And this sometimes looks pretty bad. And we have to make use of the curves layer or the levels to make the dark pixels darker and the white pixels whiter or something like that. It's a bit more time consuming, but it's still easy to learn. Yeah, and when you're going through to do this for your own army, you should find someone who has distinct colors in the locations you want them on your model. This is especially true on things that are mechanical in nature or like space marine armor and stuff, because then you don't have to play around with like, oh, but I want a checkerboard and they had it all as one plain color. You should find someone who has a checkerboard in the wrong color and then change the colors because that's easier than figuring out how to make a checkerboard appear. Yeah, it's much harder to adjust lighting and decals. It's better to pick up a model that it's close to the paint patterns that you want to use. And also maybe look at models that don't have a noisy background so you can better visualize the colors that you're changing. Yeah, secretly all of the models you guys are seeing today, he already killed all the backgrounds on. A lot of these were just sent by patrons as pictures on their desks and it's very easy for Borel to mask it out so that you only see the model itself. So Brad, I heard that you don't like the color scheme of your Necrons, right? I love the color scheme of my Necrons. I hate the painting of my Necrons. But let's say I do hate the color scheme of my Necrons. Let's say I'm an inferior person who does not realize that blue is the <laughs> ultimate energy color. Someone who would like green or red instead. Those disgusting perverts. <laughs> okay, so let's change the color of your Necrons anyway. What do you want to change on this model? Let's do the energy, because it's probably one of the most stark ways to change a Necron. Okay, so what technique you want to try? Let's try to do the color grab version. Yeah, so you go on image adjustment, replace color, and we click with the eyedrop on the blue, and we change the blue to the color we want. So right now, you see that the weapon is kind of messy, right? Yeah, but it does show off changing it. But we can use this fuzziness bar to adjust how much of the range of the blues we want to change. So if you go up with this bar, we change more tones of blue to green. If the bar was to the other side, we will change nothing. And with the bar to the other side, all of the blues are being changed to green. Does that make sense? Yep. Then we could, if we wanted to get real fancy, let's say we don't like my shoulder color. We could mask out the shoulders and attempt to change them to red if we wanted to go for a Novak look. So let's duplicate the layer. So we need a, a layer just for the selection. Let's use the object selection tool and try to make Photoshop understand that we are trying to select the shoulders and also the cape. That did a pretty good job. That's a pretty good selection. That's not bad. Let's mask it. And now we can apply the hue saturation layer just to the selection. And we can click on colorize and change the color of just the shoulders. You wanted red, right? Now that I saw the purple, that looks great. <laughs> <laughs> we want more purple, more purple. Good luck finding a paint that goes on that good and is purple. <laughs> Now we've changed my Necron to look completely different in like, what's it been, 90 seconds in real life time without editing? Yeah, so pretty quickly. And again, with more time, you can make a better selection. You can make the perfect selection of colors and lightness and saturation. But this is pretty 
pretty good for a one minute to work. And it means you're more confident that you're not making a mistake with your scheme. And then you can go do your test model knowing you'll likely like it when you finish. And you don't have to do what I just did where I took 10 different blood letters, airbrushed them all different ways, and despised 9 out of 10 of them, wasting hours of my life. Yes, yeah, because as it turns out, most of us don't have a pretty good understanding of which colors goes well with watercolors. Like some of them, they are pretty intuitive, like gold and purple. Right? Yes, they always look good together. And that's that's like the basics of the color wheel, picking the opposite and all that. Yeah, but that takes time to have the color wheel in your head to know which colors goes well with other colors. So this is pretty good for a lazy brain to just click on a slider and see what look good in your eyes. All right, so if you have any questions on this process, don't be shy. Ask in the comments on YouTube and we'll try to get them sorted out. I'll have Borelio on hand this week to actually answer everything. I know this is a bit of an experimental episode for us. We don't delve into hobby stuff all too often and this is really out there, but it was such a neat trick I wanted to share it, especially with how much use I think you can get out of it for like zero effort. It's something that I found very interesting when Borelio showed it off to me last week and I wanted to share it with everybody else. And on the show description I would try to leave some links to some videos that I liked that I used to learn all this stuff. Alright, so I'm sure everyone in our audience is now googling ways to acquire Photoshop through entirely legal means. I am sure nobody in our audience would do something illegal. I mean... Software companies are our friend, right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, look at Unity. <laughs> 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 yes, Unity, everyone's best friend right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but before you get out of here to go find ways to acquire Photoshop off the back of a truck, please leave us some of the YouTube niceties. It helps us out. And if you've got any questions when you're going through this, don't be shy in the comments. I will attempt to get Borelio to help people out for the, at least the first week of them. You can search through the comments from there to see if, if your question was answered already. Yeah, don't be shy. If you like episodes like this, please tell us that as well. And if you hated this episode, don't be shy telling us that. It was kind of a last <laughs> second audible because, well, Eric's dying. So, fantastic week all around. Oh no, I'm gonna have to learn new tricks for the next episode. <laughs> Necromancy with Borelio. <laughs> we used AI to bring Eric back to life. Sounds good. How's it going? <laughs> all right, <laughs> but let's get out of here for the week. Sounds good.